everybody. We are going to do a quick little thought. We're working with the students and we're getting ready to put motors back together. We, we got talking about what it looks like, and you guys can engage on this too. It talks what it looks like when you get the bike all the way back on the lift and then you don't have the parts that you need. And what's really driving this conversation is I was talking to a, a former uh, student that's working at a shop and it uh, just complain and complain. I can't make no money. This sucks, this sucks, this and that. But what that, what that former student doesn't know is that I also talk to the boss quite a bit and I understand how many comebacks they have, how much time is wasted, and it's stuff that could be really avoided. So talking with you guys today, this was a great opportunity to talk about how to avoid having those comebacks, how to avoid costing that dealer so much money, and we're going to be able to paint a picture today on this bike. So check this out. In a typical shop, we want you to think about the costs that are involved. And we talked about where you could have one or two or three techs, and we just threw some generic numbers up there, kind of to do easy math and to get you thinking how to make yourself worth more money. What can you do? You're working, you're out in the field, and you're trying to think, geez, why can't I grow with this company or why can't I get better jobs? This is why. Say, say we got a shop that uh, charges $100 an hour. We did some generic entry level to say that you might pull five motorcycles on and off the lift a day doing what? What are you doing? Tires. Tires, oil. brakes, oil changes, things like that. So you're kind of on, off, on, off. But to do a tire job, you got to have the right tire, right size, right kind, so on. Uh, to do oil, oil uh, services, you got to have the right filters, the right fluids or whatnot. It makes no sense to get the vehicle on the lift and then find out you don't have the parts. We have a checklist procedure here that the technicians and entry level tech looks at where you ask yourself these questions before you even put the vehicle on the lift to make sure that you can do the job that you're being asked. You got to remember, a, a, a service manager that's a little sketchy or isn't very good at organizing costs you. So you got to think about learning skills that are going to allow you to be really efficient regardless of what somebody else's performance. But in our example, we got that maybe there's five bikes a day. We're just saying a five day work week, saying that's 25 bikes a week. That's 25 potential opportunities to make time, right? For those jobs. We say that if you mess up just one bike a week, okay? So that's, and we're just going to say that it's going to cost an hour. Bikes on here, strapping it down safe parts laid out, oh, I can't put this motor back together because I forgot a damn gasket. That means pack it back up, put it off, take it off the lift, put it back into storage, then go to try and find the next job. Now the schedule's jacked up, right? Because if this was scheduled for that time frame, now I've got to figure out what I'm going to do. And it causes the service manager to have to reset the whole schedule, possibly you know, for a week or two because of these mess ups, right? Let's see what that could possibly cost us in this really simple scenario. If you mess up only one hour a week, okay, on this typical example here, we're just going to say that you did 24 jobs right and you did one wrong. And people would look at those numbers and go, that's pretty good. You know, I did one wrong and 24 right. That seems pretty good. That would cost that dealer $5,200 a year for that one hour per week that you're not being efficient because you didn't do something, right? A part down, you saw it when you took it apart, you're just not working very efficiently. And we understand, listen, believe me, I wanna say this too, and you guys know this too, there's human error. What we're trying to do is we're trying to talk about how to avoid that. We're not talking about perfection, but if you don't look at examples, you're gonna, not gonna know where you need to adjust, right? Make sense? But I want you to think about a little bit further from the dealer standpoint, and this is where it gets to the conversation with that former student last night that says you can't make no money. When the dealer's looking at that times multiple techs, that one hour a week costs that dealer, you know, on two techs, 10,400, 15,600 on three techs. I mean, it's, it's costing a lot of money by not working efficiently. Does that make sense? Yep. You with me on that? Uh, you know, I got some notes here. We're not talking about redo work versus a long time. We're talking about the fact that you did, you're doing everything right. You're not talking about comebacks as far as like you put a tire on backwards or you didn't torque something or a, a gasket didn't take. We're not talking about that. We're literally talking about the wasted time of, oh yeah, I'm gonna go try and work on this and no, I can't work on it, okay? Uh, rescheduling and we're gonna uh, do one more example. I think uh, we made some lists here how to avoid this. Okay, we talked about this, you know, organization, you know, look at what the students are doing here and they're really laying their parts out, you know, front and rear cylinders, trying to be really organized with that. Good documentation. So like for example, on this bike, 
When we started taking the bike apart, we discovered that the oil pressure light was not turning on and off. We know we had oil pressure, but the light wasn't working. We need to make sure in order those parts are diagnosed it ahead of time. We don't want it on the lift to then get all the way in here and go, oh, hey, wait, didn't we have an oil pressure problem? That might be inside the engine. It needs to be addressed at the right time and then documented in your notes so that you don't overlook it, right? Um, second eyes on the job. I, I can't stress that enough. And we're, that's, we're really thinking about that from entry level techs. A lot of people will look at my methods and say, well, that's crazy. That's where we hired you. You went to school. I really believe that you got to understand your place of go to college, get an education, or learn the craft how you learn it. And then think about the fact that once you get that job, it doesn't make you an expert. You've got to start to think about and I try to tell people quantify, quantify what you're doing. If you get in there and you've done your first five tire changes, do you really think that makes you an expert? No. You know, I don't know what the number is. I can't tell you that because it's different between people. Is it 50? Is it 100? I mean, at some point you're going to get so good and so thorough and it might be that you do a lot of the same models. So like if you're doing Road Kings quite often, you're going to be really familiar with that. But now all of a sudden the GSXR 1000 pops in you got to think about what do I not know about this vehicle that maybe I need to tweak a little different or whatnot. So experience definitely is going to come with time to make that smoother. But until then, you want to try and get a, se a second set of eyes on the job. So let's say I've disassembled this. I've got it all out. You think from your training, from your experience, from the manuals, you think you have everything figured out. It's a really good idea if you wouldn't grab that ATAC or grab that service manager and said, hey, I think I'm really uh, solid here. This is what I've come up with. And it might be where that, you know, that manager might come in and go, wow, you know, you had all the gaskets, but you know, you might not be familiar on these older twin cams that we need these tensioners. You might have overlooked that because you just don't have that product knowledge, you know, and I'm, it's just an example. Make sense? Um, the other thing that we have here is make it sure to include on the work order. We did a video on this last week about where are the parts stored. You know, if we took a gas tank off, especially on carbureted vehicles, and that fuel tank was leaking, you get what I'm saying? And But we put the gas tank somewhere else. Now the bike's on the lift. Now I'm ready to go, and I find out that I have to order you know, a fuel valve because I didn't catch it. I didn't do it the first time because I hid the part. Does it make sense? Yep. And this is what's going to happen then. Then we got to, now I'm the mechanic that I've got to go face the service manager and I got to face the, uh, the parts department and say that I've messed up, that I've got to take that off. I can't complete that job, which means that customer's got to be notified you'll be done. So, hey, parts guy Billy, uh, I messed up on that bike on the lift and I forgot that the fuel tank was leaking, so I need a fuel valve. Well, now I have to stop doing what I'm doing go back over and redo what you already did, and take some more files, go to the ordering, and let's go online and check out some parts. And do your job, you're the parts yeah. guy. This is the problem we have, is we're forgetting that when we mess up, we are inconveniencing parts department, service manager, the other customers. And like I said, it isn't about being perfect. It's about what can we do to just plain make it better. There's a lot more cost than that $5,200 in there. You know, in, in summary, just to, to wrap this up, and I think this was a great conversation last night that I could bring here and get you guys to think about what's going on in the real world. You guys got to visit the dealer, the local Harley dealer yesterday, right? Roosters? Yeah. And I mean, everything they said there, they were talking about, you gotta be organized. You gotta be able to read and write and have good documentation. You have to do that. And the big thing that we're trying to say is that you gotta do it in the right order. Who wouldn't want to? And I tell techs to do this. I say, what you think about, uh, and maybe people remember this. Do you remember this a, uh, a few years ago, if you'd ever seen it, where some student, at, it was either MMI or WowTech or Power Sports Institute or something, where they did this thing where they showed the day in the life of a student where the guy like gets up and it shows him like, you know, go to class and what that looks like. It was a killer advertisement. And what I loved about it was I think you guys need to think about that when you go to work. When I step into work, when I come through that door, I'm ready to serve. I'm ready to think about how can I impact my employees, how can I impact my students? How, what do I need to do to make that great? Your goal is, is to think about those 25 bikes that think, man, how can I approach those jobs and how can I make it where it's flawless? You know what I want at the end of the day from my boss? I want this. I want a high five. I want to just do it. What I don't want is I don't want to be 
oh, I forgot this, oh, I forgot that. And, and guys, I've had those periods of my life where I was just, you know, total chaos of that. So we're thinking about what you could do as techs. If you wanna make yourself make more money, you've gotta control that. That is not up to that dealer, that is not up to that boss. You've got to be ready to think about the things you need to practice and train on. That's my tip. I'm out. Keep wrenching.